There's a there's a long history um, about this. So you would have a town and you would have a factory or some you know a guy with a castle and he'd go live in the castle and he'd have a bunch of peasants like farming his land and feeding his cows and. And he would tell the peasants, yeah, yeah, you can live on my land and just give me 15% of your, your junk, right? The, the, whatever you produce. And so he'd live up in the castle and then that was feudalism. Then after that, we had factories. So we, we heard all the people in the cities, you get them working in the factory for the factory owner. And uh, it, it was the same thing as feudalism with a factory. And uh, so you would have a town and some family owns the, owns the town, owns all the land, owns the factory, and they'd have a little newspaper. And uh, they would tell everyone the news, what was important to them. And uh, so the news was like local, and you'd have a, like a, you know, a religious leader or a local guy, and he'd be in the pocket of whoever owned the town, and he would tell the peasants, like, uh, work hard and suffer for the afterlife. And if you, you work hard and you suffer, you'll, you're, you're going to heaven or whatever. So you're like shit, but just uh, get used to it. Right? Just don't riot, don't complain, don't, don't upset the status quo. So you would, have a, you would always have an owner. You had someone that owns uh, the media, who owns the, uh, who, who controls people's minds, and they tell them what they should believe, what they should eat, how they should live, whether or not they should accept their suffering and poverty, or whether they should revolt. And and so the uh, you would have uh, the religious leaders. The uh, for instance, the uh, before people were literate in Europe, uh, the Catholic Church basically controlled people's minds. They would go uh, every Sunday. They would go to the church. They would hear whatever the priest uh, told them, and uh, and that's what they that's how they would structure their life and decide what was good, what was bad, what was moral, what they should and shouldn't do. Then the printing press was developed, and suddenly the the Bible instead of being written in Latin was written in the the vernacular language that the the average person on the street could read, and now. Anyone can read the Bible. And they, they say, oh, the priest said the Bible says this. But hey, wait, I have a Bible. I read it, and it says this, and you're lying to us. And then you had other uh, religious movements, like the Protestant movement, come up. And they started to, people started to interpret the Bible for themselves. They undermined the religious uh, authority. And then a civil war broke out, basically, between the Catholics, uh, Catholics and the Protestants. And about uh, one-third of the population of Germany was wiped out in the civil war and the fighting. So there's, a, there's this, this, uh, this, this cycle, this fight about who gets to control the public mind. Is it the state? Do you have a dictator? And does he pull the person aside? And he says, uh, up is down, and left is right, and, if, and two plus two equals five. And if you don't believe that, I'm going to put a bullet in your head. And do you, do you have a military dictator? Do you have a, a religious dictator, a priest class? Or do you have an economic elite? So what we currently have is, a, is an economic elite that owns the newspaper, owns New York Times, owns the CNN. And the world right now is basically owned by uh, multinational corporations. We don't have a religious, we don't have a religious caliphate. We don't have a, we don't have a dictator uh, putting a gun to our head. We have a bunch of companies that want us to buy like Big Macs and Audis and get credit cards and buy Lambos and get you know mortgages. And it's a, it's so we live in a consumerist dystopia. So we have we have uh, First Amendment. We have freedom of speech. We have a thousand television channels, and these used to have separate owners. And in the last 20, 30 years, there's now like four, there's four owners. The whole international media has been bought off by like four co corporations. And so there was a maybe in the 1980s there was a democracy. There was a, different newspapers. There was different magazines. If you didn't like this one, you could have another one. But now you have basically 400 or 1,000 television channels that are all owned by four companies that are basically a cartel. So um, in, the United in the United States, for instance, in the internet service uh, provider market, there's two companies, Comcast and Time Warner. If you live in this city, you get Comcast. If you live in this city, you have Time Warner. And they say you have a choice. You, have, you know, you can choose Pepsi or you can choose Coke. <coughs> and, but, um, but this town they only sell Coke and in this town they only sell Pepsi. You know. It's, uh, it, it's completely absurd. Um, so there's this economic consolidation that happened. And, um, and what's happened recently in the last year is these corporations um, went in and they, they see Google and they say, we don't own Google. Uh, and Google controls what people see. They control the election. If you search a, pol a politician's name and Google brings good articles, the person will vote for them. If you Google them, a uh, politician, and Google says, that person's a Nazi, they're evil, they're, they're going to destroy the world, they're, they're, they're corrupt, they're blah, 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 they're, you know, the, then the person will not get elected. 
So you have a so before you would have local media, you would have Google, you would have a, a little a paper in the town, and they would have local elections and a local civil society, and uh, and you might have two papers or two different groups and so on. Now we have global media, so we have Google and Twitter and Facebook from California controlling basically what everyone on Earth sees, and so these. These, uh, so there's a fight going on here. There's not just one group. There's like 15 different groups. Like the governments are fighting to control the media because if you control Google, you control who gets elected. So the European Union says you're gonna. We don't want you publishing these articles. And if you publish them, we're gonna fine you 50 million dollars a day. And so and and if you don't listen to what we say, we're gonna fine you even more. So they they say, oh, we're in power. You have to listen to us. And then you have. Um, the corporations coming in, and they don't control Google. And Google controls what people are buying, what people are seeing. And so the corporations this year ganged up on Google, and they pulled out $700 million of advertising revenue. You have the, the largest companies in the world, it's about 800 companies, uh, pulled out almost a billion dollars a year of advertising revenue from Google. If you're a company like Google, and you have a price to earning uh, ratio of $40, it means every dollar of revenue that your company has increases your stock price by forty dollars. So if these companies pull out a billion dollars of revenue, they took away forty billion dollars from Google's market cap. So it was them just kicking the managers and kicking the, the owners of Google in the, in the nuts, basically, and saying, "We give you the money. You're going to do what we say, or we're going to get you know we're going to take this money from you." So then uh, the Google management sort of folded, and then Google's also under the pressure from the U.S. government and the U.S. military. So they come in and they say, oh, here's this country, and we want this guy elected. And we want to control this election. So these, these, so the people who have power over the media, they control the public. They control the mind of the public. They control their perceptions. And 15 different groups right now are coming in and basically having a, a free-for-all, a, a war, basically, about who is going to control the, the, the public. Is it going to be the government? Is it going to be the corporations? Is it going to be the military? And the public is just in the middle of this. They, don't, they have no idea what's going on. Um, so the what's happened with Alex Jones being censored, it wasn't just Alex Jones. Like these, They actually went into, for instance, Facebook, and there were about 1,200 channels that had uh, 1,200 groups that had about um, like 2 million people per group. And some of them are like uh, mom like uh, moms, like you should feed your child organic food. You shouldn't feed your child Gerber or whatever. The Gerber's like, you gotta shut that down. They, they go to Facebook and they say, we're paying you $300 million a year and we don't like this group, shut them down. They go and Monsanto, Monsanto comes in, they say, we're paying you for these advertisements. And if you don't shut these groups down that are opposing us, that are opposing GMOs, we are going to pull out our money. And so Facebook, what is Facebook going to do? They're going to like, well, we should censor people, but we're not going to lose three hundred million dollars. And they're going to come in and they're just going to start axing these groups. And they don't do it all at once. They do it one after another over years and years and years and years. And they do it slowly, so maybe the public doesn't notice. So if you're in that media environment, uh, the only basically what's going to happen is there's going to be these communities, and they're just going to get purged from Facebook. But the community still exists in real in the real world. It still exists in it's a human community of people, and regardless of what their opinions are, and so the the only step step is for them the next step is for those communities to own their own media platforms. So what, so the decentralization means instead of Facebook owning the data for a community, the community owns the data. So uh, what we're trying to do is build media platforms for uh, people to self-host um, the the community. For the self host their own data and self host the, the communication platform for the community so that their community owns it or some trusted people in the community own it instead of Facebook owning it. And will it be abused? Yes. I, I absolutely think like if you take a, if you give if you run a bulletin board and there is an owner, that owner is gonna start screwing with it. But you have the option of creating your own bulletin board and if the people don't like the policies here they can they have another option. But if your only option is Facebook or, face, or Facebook, you don't have a choice. It's like Facebook. You have Facebook. There's no other option, basically, right now. Right. And so what's happened is the, the, there's no freedom of expression anymore. You're only allowed to say what the corporations allow you to say or what the governments allow you to say. And if you, you tweet the wrong thing, oh, the government throws you in prison or, the or you get fired from your government job or you get 
harassed by a mob, or you the, the, the politics have become very polarized. And, uh, and the government will say, you're gonna, if you say this, we're gonna find you. And the corporations will sit, go to the platform and say, if you allow people to say this, then we are going to pull out our advertising revenue. So then these companies like Twitter say, okay, we will, um, we will, if someone says this opinion that you don't like, you the advertiser, we will censor them. So no one else will see the opinion. They can talk to themselves and their three friends, but uh, no one else will see the tweet. So you could have a million subscribers, uh, people subscribing to you on Twitter, and you give a political opinion, and they have an AI that looks at what you're saying, and depending on whether it is approved by the advertisers or not, will determine whether or not anyone can see your tweet. And it even is even getting worse now. They're shadow banning people. So you can tweet all you want, but no one can. See. You go on the website of Twitter, and particular tweets cannot be seen. They don't even show up in the feed anymore. Even if people subscribe to your feed, they're like, oh, we don't like that opinion. It's called brand management. So if you pay Twitter money and you say good things about a brand, everyone in your feed will see the tweet. And if you say a negative thing, no one will see the tweet because they're paying Twitter money. So this is. Uh, uh, it's, it's ridiculous. And, and if you'd say, okay, the companies own the, the platform, so they can do whatever they want. But um, the, the level of censorship is like this level this year, then this level, then this level, then this level, then this level. And some people see where it's going to be in five years, and it's just, uh, it, it's, it's actually absurd. So what's happening now is people are being shadow banned, and they want to have community owned outlets. So instead of having. Um, Instead of letting the corporations own the media, and let it, instead of having the governments control the media, uh, we say we're going to build a decentralized media that no one controls. So you have a community, you have your, your friends, you publish your data, you distribute the data peer to peer, and you own your data. It's your data. It's not Twitter's data. It's not Facebook's data. They can't send to you. In the next five years, we're going to see the emergence of alternative spaces for the media that are decentralized simply because the existing spaces, Facebook, have been taken over either by the government or the corporations. And um, I, I don't think it's about good or evil or whether or not there's First Amendment rights or First Amendments apply to corporations. Uh, none of that matters. It's just a question of do you have the right to express an opinion and uh, should the person with the most money decide what is true? So we're focused on communities and we think each community should own their media platform. We don't think that Facebook should own the media platform or Twitter should own the media platform because that's what we're seeing abused. Uh, right now, and this like five, ten years ago, like why would you need that? I, I this is free, this works, but then uh, it just in the last year, it's just become draconian. People can fight each other about any article, about any issue, right? They should be able to discuss it. But if you publish one thing against whatever the orthodoxy is, oh, you're list delisted from Twitter, you're shadow banned on Twitter, your article is deleted from Google News, and and you're basically harassed by mob, basically now, and uh, the level of it's just, it's just uh, like, here's the one true way, and no, we cannot have any discussion. And anyone who goes against this opinion is a Nazi, is basically the, is what the, the governments and the corporation are, are doing. And I, and I thought this was irrelevant until I actually talked to the media owners. And I, I saw this, like, people right now are completely dependent on Google. So if Google shuts off your, if you publish one thing they don't, their advertisers don't like, they will blacklist you for AdSense, from AdSense, and you will lose all of your, uh, all of your tr uh, monetization. They will say you cannot run advertisements on your YouTube channel. You will lose all your money. You'll not be able to pay your mortgage. You'll get kicked out of your house. You have to get a new job. There are people that were doing um, YouTube uh, channels. They were making like five hundred thousand dollars a month. Then they make one or two videos on some topic, and maybe the French government doesn't like it, or they don't like this. And, some, and they, or this corporation didn't like one thing they said. And then they said, your videos are not advertiser friendly. Meaning your videos do not express the opinions that the people who are paying us money like. And then their whole revenue went down to three, uh, like $30,000 a year. They just cut off all the traffic to their channel and just axed them and just got, rid of them, got them off the platform to make the platform more advertiser friendly. It's a very bizarre political correctness regime.